Amen. Pandemic praise to anyone? Anybody who would like to join and sing in, sing along, come on up. Yes. Come on and join in and praise the Lord with us. Amen. It's the stuff we've been singing all year, so I don't expect to surprise anybody with anything. So it'll be familiar or something that you can join in to. Amen. Amen. <laughs> All the glory belongs to you. All the glory belongs to you, oh God. Yeah, yeah. All the glory belongs to you. All the glory belongs to you, oh God. Hey, hey. Say all the glory belongs to you. All the glory belongs to you, oh God. All the glory, all the glory belongs to you. All the glory belongs to you. All the glory belongs to you.
lesson and to our morning worship service and we thank God for Brother Fisher and doing a great job in teaching the Sunday school lesson and all of those who uh, gave uh, informative uh, information, amen, that I certainly enjoyed it and God has blessed us to be going through some wonderful teaching from the Old Testament. And the Old Testament is preparatory for the New Testament. And you can't really understand where you are, where you're going, until you kind of recognize where you've been. And the Old Testament tells us where we were. The New Testament tells where we are and where we're going on into uh, the future. We have a lesson today coming from the Old Testament and dealing with the children of Israel. And they have been freed from 400 years of bondage down in Egypt. Now, when they went there, it wasn't any more than 70 to 80 individuals that uh, went a man and, and they tabernacled there because there was a plague, a man in their land, family in their land, a man, and they went there for resources. And Joseph, a man, won favor with uh, uh, a man, Pharaoh, and Pharaoh allowed them to stay. And uh, Joseph told about some of the dreams that he was having, and uh, he was put in a high position, and everything was going well for the children of Israel. But that was only a temporary resting place that they made permanent. Uh, it, it wasn't God's plan for them to remain in Egypt. But sometime, amen, in our temporary travel travels, amen, sometimes we land in a place where we stayed too long. Uh, and we put roots down in, even, if, even though it's not the place that we had dreamed of, amen, mm -hmm. it's not the place we really want to be, but amen, but because we are there and things are going well, we set up roots and we remain there. Have you ever been on a job, amen, that you really didn't like, amen, but you took it because you needed a little money in your pocket and you needed to survive and have roof over, uh, roof over your head, and you took that job. Yeah, yeah. And in your mind, it was temporary, but that paycheck, amen, brought pleasures in your life, and you enjoyed them. And the boss that you worked for, amen, he was all right. He was a great dude, or she was a great woman, amen, and everything was going well, and then all of a sudden, things changed. A new manager came to town. Somebody else was put in charge. And they didn't like you. They didn't like, amen, what you were doing and what you were trying to create, amen. That happened in Egypt with the children of Israel as they began to multiply. Amen. Pharaoh looked at them and said, you know what? Amen. If they keep growing like this, they're going to take over our Land. Man, history kind of repeats itself, doesn't it? And man, we have individuals in our country today that believe that if ethnic groups keep on growing the way that they are growing, that 
they will be displaced. And we will take over the land. Am I right about that? So what do they do? They do everything to make what? Life hard for us. They made everything hard for the children of Israel down in Egypt to slow down their growth and make things uncomfortable for them. So Israel cried out because their freedom turned into bondage. Their joy turned into sorrow. Amen. Their pleasure turned into pain in Egypt. So they cried out unto the Lord that he would deliver them from this situation. God said, Moses, Moses, amen, the, uh, the reluctant leader, he sent him down, amen, to tell Pharaoh, let my people go. He didn't want to do it because he needed them. He needed to slave what? Slave labor. Have I got a witness? And if you can get people to work for nothing or a little nothing, a little of nothing, amen, that's slave labor. They were reaping the profits, amen, but they were what? The people weren't receiving any benefit. They're making life hard. And when they complained, they even made life even harder. That's what they did. So God said, he sent Moses down there, and Moses gained their freedom with 10 plagues. See, God had to use something to get our attention. Because all the time, we, we won't listen. Ten plagues. They, they didn't recognize the first, and they didn't bother. The second one didn't bother them too much. The third one, the fourth one, the fifth didn't bother them too much. But as the intensity increased in the pressure that God was putting on them, and the last plague, the tenth plague, required the death of what? The first bound going that got their attention. God's got a way of getting our attention. It may start off soft, but it intensifies until we do what he wants us to do. And Pharaoh released the people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. And he gave them encouragement, and he gave them a destination where they would live. And that destination was the promised land. A land flowing with milk and honey. A land that had, amen, fruit groves that they didn't have to plant. That had well that they didn't have to dig. They, they came in broke, but God was going to prosper them in what? The promised land. All they had to do was to make it through the wilderness journey. Amen. So I think I've given you a little, little picture of what happened. But I want to talk about what's in the lesson today. It said God sends quail and clay. Yes. Amen. He gave them what they wanted plus something else. Yes. And, and that was a reason for that, amen. Because they had a craving in their life was contrary to the will of God. God had already given them manna. And, 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 and manna was an all-sufficient meal. In other words, it gave everything to them that they needed. They didn't need no meat. Because what? Manna was like a protein shake. Amen. It had everything mixed in it, amen, to get them strength and get them what? Power to do what they needed to do. But they remember after a few days and a few months of eating manna, well, I'm tired of this manna. I don't want this anymore. I want something else. I got a craving for some meat. Yeah. And that's nothing wrong with it having cravings. The problem is when the object of your craving is something other than the Lord himself or his will for our lives. Have I got a witness in here? 
Man, the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be what? Given unto you. In other words, we don't have to complain to God and complain about God. We can pray to God and he will what? Give us all everything that's within what? His will for our life and everything that will accomplish what? His purpose in this world. But you know, strong, strong cravings are difficult to ignore. And they seem never to go away. And they oftentimes become a dangerous pursuit in our lives. Am I right about that? Yeah. And, and cravings can sometimes be referred to as temptations. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. And temptations can, and cravings can lead up, lead us to strange places mm -hmm. and dangerous situations. Yeah. Man, I, 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 I'm a witness to that. Yeah. Uh, when I was living in uh, the Big B apartments, uh, a, a, a man down there on Keys. Uh, and, and my wife was uh, uh, pregnant and I was going to work, amen. Uh, uh, every day kept you, amen. And for some reason, one, one day, amen, for whatever reason in her mind, she had a craving from something, for something from Dairy Queen. And then she's going to take her nine month body out there and try to wobble down the Dairy Queen so about two miles down the road. And I'm asking myself the question, what is wrong with this woman? She called and told me that I'm at Dairy Queen and I can't make it back home. These people get me wild and, and trying to help me. I said, why are you going down now? I have some prayer. I have to pray. <laughs> so I told my boss I got to run home real quick. And I drove as fast as I could to pick her up and then add her craving and took her back to the house. It could have been dangerous. Craving yeah. <laughs> can lead to strange places and dangerous situations. See, cravings are dangerous when they began to control us and overrule the best practices for our health and for our lives. Am I right about that? I, I love pizza, but if I eat too much, it tends to cause me to have indigestion. I love ice cream. I love ice cream. <laughs> but, but I have to do it in my private. Because it, 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 it energizes me. It, it, it gives me fuel that I really don't need all the time. I love fried chicken. But too much fried chicken and salt can cause a rise in my blood pressure. I don't have a sweet tooth. I have sweet tea <laughs> and a sweet tongue. <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with things that I, I've spoken of necessarily. They're not necessarily bad if eaten in moderation. But who does that? <laughs> who eats Amen. things in moderation? Who, who allows the things that they pray for in moderation? Have I got to work with this here? See, we want what we want when we want it. And we will go to extreme measures to get what we want. Am I right? Yeah. Amen. Yeah, for some reason, amen. That, that's something I think about it, man. I, we got a place, it's a place out there in Mansfield. And uh, they uh, make a protein shake in there. It's got peanut butter and it's got, uh, uh, amen, blueberry. Go ahead and name it off, baby. Blueberry, banana. Bananas. And, 
and a little chocolate in there and everything. And we got one the other day, and I've been I've been going places to find them ever since then. <laughs> I've gone to three smoothie shops since I've been since I had that. But so for some reason, I got a craving in particular places, hey man. You didn't think I'm, I'm driving nine miles just to get a smoothie. <laughs> Because of what? A crazy. Am I right about that? Yeah. And one thing about us and everything, that you may be broke as broke, amen. man. You may not have a dime in your pocket, amen. But if someone invites you to a, a vacation in Jamaica, and amen, they'll tell you, amen, that they'll pay your way, amen, you'll find some spending money somewhere. Have I got a witness? I don't know what you say, have to say on that, man. You'll sell your jewelry, your shoes, your clothes, or whatever. But you're going to Jamaica. So we will find a way to get what we pray in our lives. Look at right, Sister Matthew. <laughs> and we will go to extreme measures to get what we want. And the problem here, the problem here is that our wants can easily become obsessions mm -hmm. and control our actions. Mm -hmm. Am I right about it? Because we can quickly, because of our nature, we can become obsessed mm -hmm. with something. Mm -hmm. Adam and Eve became upset, well, Eve did, and Adam did also, uh, became obsessed with the one tree in the garden that they couldn't what? Had. 99. They were given permission for yeah. one tree they couldn't have, and they became what? Obsessed yeah. with it. And then the devil provided what? An answer, a temptation for them what? To get what they crave to have. Have I got a witness? Yeah. That's why we have to be very careful, amen, to dismiss things quickly because once they set up roots in our mind, amen, they can become obsessive. Uh -huh. I forgot what this is. Yeah. Amen. Now, 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 I can make an excuse and I can say this, amen. I can say that I need that shirt when I go into a department store because it's different from every shirt in my closet. But why, why do I need one more shirt when I've got over a hundred? Yeah. Huh? But I can become what if I look at it too long and think about it too much, it becomes what? An obsession. And I got to what? Have it. Just like I had to have all the other 99 in my closet. And because we are what? Creatures. It's in our nature to obsess about things. Such as it was with the children of Israel. It was a mind thing. It's always a mind thing, my brothers and sisters. Amen. They convinced themselves that they had to have a certain thing in their life. And sometimes we convince ourselves that we have to have a certain person in our life. No matter how many spots and wrinkles and amen that they have, we got to have them in our life. Our theory about the issue is that they got some good qualities and I will help change. I will change the bad qualities that they have. If they don't change them, they'll never get changed. Because we can't change nothing in the life of another individual. We can only change the things what in our own life. And oftentimes I stand here and I speak up Sister Matthews and, and some of the men probably say, and the women might say, well, why didn't he, he always saying good things about her. He talks about what he has to fix in his life. Why did he do that? She can't be perfect. No, she's not perfect, but I can't fix her, but I can what? Fix me if I allow the Lord what? To work on me. I can't change anybody, but I can change what? Myself. How I think about what? A certain situation. Have I got a witness? Because it's what? It's a mind thing. Such as it was with the children of Israel. So driven by their desire for me. They complained against God. Mm -hmm. They have complained to God. Yeah. You know, that, that's amazing. 
that they are, they are complaining to and complaining about the God that just brought them out of bondage. Man, that's amazing. I can't get my, I can't wrap my hand around that. That doesn't make sense. But when my children were growing up in the house, amen, and I was providing a roof over their head, food on their table, clothes on their back, shoes on their feet, oftentimes they would go to a neighbor's home and saw what the neighbor had and complained about some of the things that were in our house. Why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? Why can't we have that? And I just shook my head. I said, man, what's wrong with these kids? <laughs> I said, what's wrong with these people? It could be a husband or a wife, amen. A wife complain about what the husband is not doing because she's looking in somebody else's house. A husband complaining about the wife and what she's got because he's looking at what? Somebody else's house. But God overlooks all of our complaining and all of the negative activities, amen, that we have and he loves us. And he's faithful to us in spite of. Have I got a witness? See, God is faithful even when we are not. Am I right about that? Pastor, what are you talking about? Well, we 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 follow idol gods every day in our life. Something takes catches our attention and we forget about God. But God still wakes you up in the morning. <laughs> God still put food on your table. God still put clothes over your, on your back. Shelter over your head. Strength in your body. Have I got a witness? He may not give you everything you want, but he gives you everything that you need to survive in your life. They should have been thanking God for all he had already done for them. Uh -huh. Have I got a witness? Yeah. All of us at some point in our lives have been guilty mm -hmm. of not thanking God That's enough. That's Have I got a witness? Amen. Not thanking God enough for what he has already done. Yeah. Yeah. Man, it's amazing. Yeah. When I look back over my life, yeah. I can't say nothing about your life because I don't know nothing about it. Yeah. And oftentimes y'all think I'm talking about y'all. I, <laughs> I don't know nothing about what you're doing. I don't know where you live. I don't know what you're doing. I'm talking about my relationship with God. When I look back over my life, I see how messed I won. Man, my thinking was jacked up. And, and God, she gave me a, a new mind, a new heart, a new life. And I just said, Lord, thank you. Thank you for salvation. Thank you for my life. Thank you for my life. Thank you for my children. Come on, now I get the privilege and then to be your servant in the house of God. I said, thank you. Is everything going well? No! But I thank him yeah. for what he's already done for me. And if God never does anything else in my life, I can't thank him enough. I forgot a witness. But these people were unthankful. And I want you to put a pen in this. Be careful in how you address God and what you ask God for. For he may give you what you ask for and more. Forgot a witness. You know, I, the quickest way, but we, we can't, it's kind of hard for us to do. The, the, the quickest way of teaching our children not to eat too much candy mm. is given too much candy. Mm. Oh, I said something heavy right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Did y'all catch that one? Yeah. Give them too much candy 
And when they get sick on it, they won't want it no more. Yeah. Have I got a witness? When I, was, I had, you know, I'd hang out with the guys sometimes. And, and if we had an opportunity one time, we just had all the wine we wanted. But we just sit there and we drank wine. We drank wine, we drank wine all day. We drank wine. I drank that stuff and everything. I got sick. I mean, I threw up for three days. Three days. And every time I saw wine, my stomach started getting cramped. <laughs> have, have I got a witness? Have I got a witness? It says sometimes God will give us more than what we ask for to make us what? Sick of what? Sick of it. Yeah, yeah. And when you look at the text, they made that God gave them more than what they asked for. To yes, some, it, you may say it was their, it was their last supper. Yes. <laughs> Amen. For some of them, it became what their last supper. Yeah. I got a witness. Yes, they had despised God's plan yeah. and provision, and therefore, in doing so, they despised God. That's heavy. They dishonored God by dishonoring God's word and God's what? God's will. And as a warning to others, God's judgment came hard against them. And I'm going to say this. I said it last week or week before last. Don't play with God because God doesn't yeah, yeah. Have I got a witness? God doesn't play. Uh, we, we, we may play around and say, I love the Lord. He heard my cry. Then do whatever we want to. You play it. But God doesn't play. And, and there's, our, there's consequences for what? Playing with God. Because God is going to bring you into what? Judgment. Oh, you're not going to get away with it. Oh, well, well it's been months. It's been a couple of years. Amen. That it's been a decade I've been giving away. Hey, payday comes. Payday comes. And just like payday came to the children of Israel. Yeah. Because God doesn't pay. They got what they wanted, but they paid a heavy price. And see, sin carries a heavy price. Romans 6 and 23 says, For the wages of sin is death. Can I say that again? Y'all hear that? Did it, touch, did, it, did, it, did, it, did it did it reside? Did it stay? Did you receive that? For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Wow. In other words, payday what? It's coming. See, in Israel's wilderness journey was preparatory. It was preparatory. Y'all hear me? Yes. In other words, God was getting them ready for what? The entrance into what? The promised land. It was kind of like a relationship training session that he had with them out in the wilderness because he had to clarify some things with them. He had to change some things with them. He had to clean up some things with them. He had to cast out some things in them. Something needed to be cast out and some things need to be held to for them to be a people after God's own heart. Yes. So it was preparatory. Mm -hmm. God was getting them ready for their entrance into what? The promised land. Yes. Because they were his people, right? Yeah. They were his people. Uh -huh. And God's expectation for his people is to live well, holy, a holy life that will attract and not what? Repel individuals away. Such also is what the church is going through now. As God prepares us for our entrance into heaven. All of this, my brothers and sisters, is preparatory for us to enter into the kingdom of God in heaven. A wonderful change right now within the church and those who belong to God is taking place in our lives. Yes. Romans 12, 1 and 2 says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, 
that he present your body a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And then in verse two, he said, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that he may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And as followers of Jesus Christ, it is important to pray the things that will satisfy our soul and move us closer to him. Not further away, but what? Closer to him. Philippians 4 and 4 said, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Philippians 4 and 6 said, be careful for nothing. But in everything, everything, yeah. by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made unto God. Don't complain. Don't confront God. But pray about it and ask God for his will to be done in your life. Philippians 4 and 7 says, and the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. I forgot a witness for all to be kept by Jesus. Amen. Be faithful, amen. And all his power resides within us. That's a day of what? Thanksgiving. And I'm getting ready to close this thing out. I want you to notice. In the scriptures that I just read to you, there is no complaining, only thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. You notice that? Yeah. Okay. Psalms, amen, 103 and 1 said, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And forget not all his benefits. Who giveth all that, who forgiveth all that iniquity, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth the, thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercy. And they respected, disrespected God. The cause of some meat. <laughs> After all he had done for them, they were fussing about some bologna, some salami, some chopped pressed ham. They were complaining about what? Meat of all things. After he had done all of those things for them, what are you disrespecting? <laughs> Or disobeying God about what are you guilty of? Yeah, Amen. Yeah. What are you complaining to God about not doing in your life? You need to think about it. Be like David. And I'm gonna let you go. First of all, I want to say stop the nonsense, stop the foolishness, stop the complaining, and start praising God for what He's already done in your life. Yeah. Be like David in Psalm 34, 1 through 3. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. And boy, I love this part. He told initially what he was going to do. Then he invited others to do what joined him. He said, oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let exalt his name the devil. When you are praising, when you are praising God, when you are praising God, you ain't complaining. When you're praising, you ain't complaining. When you're praising God, you ain't worrying about anything. You are in your worship mode. It's not about you. When you're praising God, yeah, yeah. it's about thanking Him for using His supernatural power yeah. to solve your natural 
problem. Have I got a witness in here? And when you appreciate what someone has done for you, when you truly appreciate it and you show that appreciation, it encouraged them to do even more. Wow, that's heavy. That's a heavy statement. When you appreciate what someone has done for you and you show that appreciation, it tends to make them want to do even more. Wow. God loves us, Devin. He loves us. We're going through some hard times in life. We must remember that God is faithful. What are you talking about, Pastor Matthew? Tracy sang the song, if God never does anything else for us, he's already done enough. And what he did out on Calvary's cross, man, it just blows my mind. And the Bible said he came down through 42 generations. I'm, 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 listen, y'all, I'm talking about God. I'm talking about the maker, of creator of everything. He, he, he changed his form until the form of a little baby laid in the heart of a manger. He walked the dusty streets of Jerusalem, opened blinded eyes, unstopped deaf ears, caused lame men to walk. He caused dead men to rise from the grave. In other words, not only what did he, was he born, he fellowship with us. Yeah, yeah. That shows his concern and his love for us. He walked among us that we would accept and believe who he was and realize how much he loved. Yeah, yeah. Then he allowed men, men to put mail in his hand, yeah. spikes in his feet, yeah. on the old of the cross, on the hill of Carl Calvary. Yeah. Wow, Calvary. Y'all know about Calvary, don't you? Calvary was an altar. The cross was the sacrificial lamb, Jesus Christ, hanging on it. And he was sacrificed for the sins of all mankind. Yes, yes, he paid the price yes, that we could not pay. He died the death that we could not die. The Bible said they took him down, laid him in a bar or two, laid there. Alone is 
I have a lot of individuals, I, I hope. I probably have some that do and some that don't, that respect me as a pastor. Yes, sir. But you don't give me more respect than you do the Lord. Yes. For whatever I do in my life is the results of what he has done in this life. Yes. I forgot a witness. Amen. I forgot a witness. He made me. And if he controls me, I can do great things in his name. But if I'm trying to do it on my own, I'll never make it. They were trying to do stuff on their own. They know what? They're craving and they're not the will of God. My brothers and sisters, God loves you. But be careful what you ask for. Be careful what you get involved in because some things will lead to destruction. And God will allow those things in your life sometimes to get your attention because we are in a wilderness journey right now. We're going through some stuff preparing us for our heavenly home. May God bless you. May God bless you. Thank <laughs> you. 